Hello. Right. Today we are discussing another type of questions. Statement questions. Yeah. If you have analyzed the question patterns inside the paper, you must have seen value based questions, graph questions, and we have another type statement questions. We get lots of statements and they're asking us to find what are the correct answers and what are the what are not true statements and all that. Right. So this is the secret uh, behind doing good marks for statement questions. So stay tuned. Uh, let's discuss the statement type question models. All right. When it comes to the statement questions, actually, when answering the questions, there are a couple of skills that you should have. One of the many, first one, the basic one is the equations. Equations and statements. What is the connection? Yes. Just do not read the statement. Read the equation inside of it. It's like you read the question and you read the statement and think of the equation behind it. What is the equation behind this statement? How can I prove this statement with what equation I'm going to prove it? So with this thinking, actually, you are thinking from physics rather than just giving a random answer just from your imagination, you give the answer. What you are doing is you are relating a physics equation. That is one of the best thing that you can do. That is what you have to do. Yes, in some questions, actually, we cannot relate that much of a, a statement a equation for sure. But in most cases, 90% cases, actually, we can relate an equation. So try this one. So let's discuss with a couple of questions and you will understand the pattern. And if not, actually, there's another way to do it. Let's discuss after the after those questions. Right. Stay tuned for that. Let's do it now. Right. This is our very first question. So let's read the question. If you can do the question, that is OK. Uh, I'll be explaining it actually in few minutes. Uh, which of the following statements is true regarding the capacitance of a parallel plate capacitor? So let's look at the, the equations actually behind this. So in the very first one, they're asking us, it does not depend on the distance between the plates. So, so they're asking us the distance between the plates. So how do you find it? We need the equation for this. So what's the equation for capacitance of a parallel plate capacitor? A epsilon naught over D. So here D is the displacement between the plates. So it does not depend on the distance between the plates. That is, yes, of course, you can see that's wrong. Right. It decreases when dielectric is placed between the plates. Right. What happens when dielectric is placed? See here now. If epsilon naught value is increased, if you replace it's k epsilon naught or something like that, so the C value will increase. Again, second answer is wrong. It is uh, it is unit uh, is joules per per coulomb, right? For this also we need the equation capacitance Q equals C V. The equation we are getting here. So uh, here C equals Q C, its unit is Joules per Coulomb. Let's see other questions. It is independent of the charge. This is correct actually. It's independent of charge because here there's no charge in the equation you can see of course. No charge here so that means it is independent of the charge. That's correct. It is defined as the energy required to remove to move a unit charge from one plate to another, it is defined as the energy required to move a unit charge from one plate to another. So C basically it's Q divided by V. It's basically uh, potential Coulomb per volt. So it's it's not energy, right? So uh, which one of the following statements is true regarding the capacitor of the parallel capacitor? So it is independent of the charge. It's fourth answer. So if you know the equation, then it's easy to get the answer. I hope you, so you see the point here. Right. Right. This question, very similar to the previous question. Just read it and see. The period of an object performing a simple harmonic motion depends on. Right. We are given three statements. They are asking whether these are correct or not. Right. Let's try the question now. I hope you see the similarity. Right. 
so for this actually we need the equation so what's the equation t time period equals 2 pi root l over g here l is the length and g is the acceleration right so the period of an uh, the period of an object performing a simple harmonic motion depends on amplitude of oscillation so yes we don't see amplitude here in this equation that means amplitude doesn't matter right it won't have any effect on the time period right so if you just just think without the equation if you just think you have no idea whether this is correct or not you just you might imagine okay so if i take it bit furthermore maybe the speed is high the ti time period may be less or something like that you just imagine it you don't know the physics part of it so the re real physics part of it is the equation so just think of the equation you will find the answer the speed of an object at the equilibrium point again velocity here doesn't mention here right the initial position of the object that is also not there that means all these three statements are false easy question i just wanted to show you the point here i hope you understand it now right right look at this question so this question actually that is also from simple harmonic motion because it's easier to find uh, you might remember the equations also that's why i'm taking this example anyway for an object undergoing simple harmonic motion right the magnitude of acceleration is maximum when the displacement is maximum so you need the equation otherwise you you don't know this acceleration a equals minus omega squared x where x is the displacement from the center right then the displacement is maximum looks it's it's good right it's correct the displacement is maximum when the speed is maximum so what's the connection with displacement and the velocity speed omega root a squared minus x squared that is the one of the equations we have o v equals omega a or we can take omega into x right so i hope you see the displacement is not maximum when the acceleration is maximum the displacement here if x is zero then only you can see this is maximum omega a so that's that's how so it's wrong the magnitude of acceleration is maximum when the speed is maximum again when the speed is maximum at the center point where x equals 0 here just like the other question x is 0 here if x is 0 acceleration is 0 wrong fourth one maximum potential energy is greater than the maximum kinetic energy actually here we cannot give an equation just the, uh, the other example i give uh, the maximum potential energy should be equal to the maximum kinetic energy conservation of energy right the acceleration is always constant of course you know from the equation acceleration varies with the with the displacement right so if you know the equation you can see now it's really easy to give the answer for statement question right as i mentioned you earlier actually there are some statements actually we cannot give an equation so here i'm giving you the example here now actually for these statements actually we cannot give an equation so let's read it now consider the following statements made regarding longitude and transverse waves so they are telling only transverse waves can undergo refraction so here what we should do is think of the examples right think of the questions you have done before right questions you have practiced so see or check whether th you have done these type of questions only transverse wave can undergo refraction you must have heard waves can do this refraction thing it doesn't matter whether it's transverse or uh, longitudinal right so refraction that happens it's a wave property so that correct that is only so here it's wrong both type of waves can undergo interference and diffraction right diffraction actually you must have heard about it so it's correct and interference actually because of interference we get standing waves so we do standing waves from transverse waves and yes here yeah, the tube longitudinal waves as well so that means this is correct both type of waves can produce beats yes we find equations from beats from sound and from strings and all that so that means that is also correct right so we get bc so check yes we have bc answer here so fourth one is the answer so sometimes actually you ne we need actually our practice for this so just apply for the examples whether you have done questions like that or whether you have heard of it 
something like that. So, for he, he actually doing questions like this, only we need our knowledge. I hope you understand the statement method. Basic method is doing, remember or trying to get the equation out of it. If not, think of the examples. Whether can you give the examples for it, right? Just practice this method. You will finally be able to do statement questions like a probe.